Hey there, and welcome to the Reflux Revolution podcast. I'm Molly Pelletier, registered dietitian, reflux and GERD nutrition specialist, founder of Flora Nutrition, and a former GERD sufferer myself for over a decade. I've been where you are, frustrated, overwhelmed, and exhausted from reflux symptoms, juggling, conflicting advice, and wondering if I'd ever feel normal again. After years of navigating this myself, I made it my mission to help people like you find real lasting relief. On this podcast, we cut through the noise with practical evidence-based strategies and tools to help you understand and manage your reflux with confidence. Before we dive in, a quick disclaimer, the information shared in this podcast is for educational purposes only. It's not meant to diagnose, treat, or cure any medical condition and should never replace guidance from your physician or your dietitian. Your body is unique and your care should be too. I want to start this podcast with a story. I once had a client, let's call her Sarah, who had been on a proton pump inhibitor, PPI, for years. Her reflux was better, sure, but she started feeling tired, weak, and noticing more frequent colds. After a deeper look, we discovered that she had deficiencies in key nutrients like magnesium, calcium, B12, and iron, which I think may have been linked to her long-term PPI use. Sarah's story actually isn't unique. Millions of people with GERD rely on PPIs, sometimes for years, without realizing that there can be a few hidden consequences. Don't get me wrong, I'm not anti-PPI. I took PPIs for over a year, but today we're going to be breaking down which nutrients can be affected, why that matters, and what you can do to fill the gap safely if you are using a PPI in your reflux journey. So let's chat a little bit first about what PPIs do and why nutrient gaps happen. PPIs work by reducing stomach acid, which is helpful for reducing inflammation in the short term if you are suffering from persistent reflux and this is very acidic reflux that can create a lot of inflammation in the esophagus the throat the stomach so this can help reduce inflammation in a short-term capacity but stomach acid isn't just for helping break down food it actually does play a critical role in activating certain nutrients so they can be absorbed by the body so For example, calcium needs stomach acid for absorption. So long-term PPI use can reduce calcium uptake, which may reduce the risk for osteoporosis or osteopenia. And important to note that PPIs, they don't like suppress all stomach acid. You still have some, um, but the stomach acid is reduced. Also magnesium. You've probably heard so much about magnesium all over social media, and it is like a miracle mineral. It does so many things in our body. It's essential for energy, muscle function, and nerve signaling. PPIs can lead to lower magnesium, uh, which may cause certain issues like muscle cramps, fatigue, or maybe even restless leg syndrome. Now let's chat vitamin B12. This is a really big one that I see a lot in my practice. So stomach acid helps release B12 and chronic PPI use can result in deficiency. So looking out for signs like fatigue, tingling, cognitive changes, Um, These types of things could indicate a B12 deficiency. And then lastly, iron and zinc both do rely on stomach acid for optimal absorption. So long-term PPI use might compromise iron and zinc stores a little bit. So here's the thing. Sometimes you don't always notice these deficiencies until they show up as certain symptoms. So you want to look out for a couple things and let's chat about that so that you're aware of Um, signs of nutrient deficiencies. So a few common red flags are low energy, persistent fatigue, uh, taste changes, like a uh, metal taste in your mouth, muscle cramps, weakness, cracking lips, um, sores around the mouth, frequent illness or poor immune response, brain fog or trouble concentrating, issues with sleep, irritability, or low mood. If any of these sound like things you've been experiencing more than normal and you've been on a PPI for months or years, it's worth talking to your doctor or your dietitian about getting some nutrient levels tested. The good news is there are practical evidence-based ways to support your nutrient status. Even if you do need PPIs for your reflux or your Barrett's, we can work with your body, work with nutrition and strategic supplementation to help you get the, the nutrients you need. So number one is work with your healthcare team directly. 
to regularly check these nutrient levels. Blood work can be extremely helpful. And if your provider will not order this for you, number one, that's a red flag. Uh, for that provider, you might want to look for other in-network providers. Um, or you can actually get these through Quest as well through a lab near you to check out these levels so that you know you're in a good spot with your micronutrients. A dietitian can also help you with this in some cases. This is something that we do in our practice, and I think it's really, really valuable for certain people. Number two is we can focus on nutrient-rich foods. So leafy greens like kale, spinach, arugula, nuts and seeds, fortified dairy or fortified cereals even can really help to boost iron, magnesium, calcium. Lean meats like turkey, chicken, salmon, fish, and eggs are excellent for B12 and iron. You could also consider a lean ground beef. So a lot of people stop eating red meat altogether when they are diagnosed with GERD because they think that red meat is really fatty and it's a trigger. And there are definitely certain cuts of red meat that are very fatty, but you can easily get like a 96 or a 98% ground beef or even like a 95 or a 93 is still pretty lean. And that will give you a ton of zinc, iron, B12, and selenium too. So it might not be off the table. You can also mix ground beef with ground turkey. And that's a great way to kind of reduce the fat content as well, but still get those amazing nutrients in that iron. Also things like whole grains, oatmeal, quinoa, those fortified cereals, uh, that can be really a great way to add in zinc and legumes as well, like chickpeas and lentils are great sources of zinc. So the third thing I want to talk about here is consider supplements when necessary. So this is really helpful to get some guidance from a dietitian here because you don't want to like over supplement with certain things, especially iron. It is a heavy metal, so you don't want to take too much iron. This is something that I would definitely consult with your healthcare provider in terms of supplementing before going on iron because it can also cause some constipation issues. It likewise with zinc, if we have too much zinc, this can reduce copper levels. So I think that supplementation can be very, very helpful. We just want to do this carefully. Certain things like vitamin D can be amazing to supplement with because it is hard to get enough vitamin D through food. Um, you may be getting vitamin D if you're having like fortified almond milk or ripple milk is like a fortified pea milk in the United States as well. So if you're doing things like that, you might be getting some vitamin D there. But a vitamin D with K2 supplement might be useful if you have vit low vitamin D. And then B12. If you have a B12 deficiency, we certainly are going to be supplementing here. And then we do want to keep checking those levels maybe every three to six months because B12 is stored in the body. So vitamin K, A, D, and E uh, and B12 do get stored. So we do want to just keep checking in on those so that we're not getting too, too much. Last thing, lifestyle strategies. So small dietary tweaks, especially taking your PPI correctly, supporting your digestion with chewing really well, breaking the food down in your mouth. That, that not only helps you break the food down and absorb nutrients better, but it also stimulates digestive juice production lower down in the digestive tract. So chewing your food well stimulates 30 to 50% of your digestive juice production. So if you miss this step and you're just eating really, really quickly, you are missing out on digestive support and potentially absorbing certain nutrients better. So really thinking about that mealtime hygiene aspect is awesome. We also want to think about here in terms of iron absorption. Iron is best absorbed away from calcium. So maybe trying, if you are taking an iron supplement or you're trying to get in iron through your food, thinking about not having dairy at that meal or not having a calcium supplement at the same time could be really, really helpful. Okay, so few key takeaways. PBIs can be a helpful short-term strategy but they don't fix the reflux problem itself. PPIs simply reduce stomach acidity, but they do not form like a barrier the way that alginates or reflux raft does. They also don't address like the root cause of the reflux necessarily because for most people, it's not hyper secretion of acid. It's usually a motility issue. It's usually a digestive issue or even a nervous system issue with that LES that's not closing at the right times. Could be a structural issue as well or a mechanical problem. So PPIs, although they can be helpful in certain scenarios, we really want to carefully consider your nutrient status here, how long you've been on them, what is your exit strategy for the PPIs. And so the solution isn't fear or panic here. It's just education, awareness, 
and having a concrete plan for how we are going to address your medication and address your nutrient status. If you are currently on a PPI, you might want to consider checking your nutrient status with your doctor or your dietitian. You also may want to have a conversation with your doctor if your goal is to get off of your PPIs, what the plan is here. For some people with reflux who do not have Barrett's, there could be an exit strategy where we try this for three to six months and then we try to, you know, slowly wean off of the PPI with alternate support, with nutrition and lifestyle. And that's a conversation that you'd want to have with your doctor before making any changes to your medication. But having a good nutrition plan, a good supplement plan in place can really help with this transition. Also, we want to think about filling the gaps with food first. So all of those foods that I mentioned are excellent ways to really nourish and fortify your body and prevent nutrient deficiencies. If you have developed a nutrient deficiency, we can then do some strategic supplementation as well. So let's circle back to Sarah. Remember Sarah, after making small adjustments, targeting those nutrient gaps, she not only felt her reflux was better managed, but her energy and overall wellness also improved. And that's the goal here. Not just reducing symptoms, but also feeling like truly healthy, feeling vibrant in your body so that you can live your best life and reach your full potential. That is always the goal. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode on nutrient gaps from PPI use. If you are looking for more guidance on supporting your digestion, choosing reflux-friendly foods, or understanding supplements, please be sure to subscribe to this podcast, leave a review, and also head over to www.flora-nutrition.com where we share free resources, our programs, and also the Flora app for people with GERD, LPR, Barrett's, hernia, etc. If this episode helped you, please leave a review, share it with a friend who's struggling with reflux as well. And until next time, do something for your nervous system today, and I'll see you in the next episode.